everybody, welcome back to Making Stuff with Mrs. Brody. I'm Mrs. Brody, and today we're going to talk about murals. And I'm actually standing in front of the one I'm working on at my house. I haven't worked on it in a while. I've been a little lazy about it. But I have been working on a mural at my school. And this is to, have to commemorate the 6th and 7th graders that are kind of graduating and moving on to a new school. A lot of them were at the school when it was founded, and it's kind of important to to commemorate and make them feel like it was worthwhile and that they're important students because they're definitely important scholars. So before you start a mural, some things you might need to know about. I had to have it measured to make sure that I was doing my sketches correctly. So if it was gonna be 27 feet long and I made my sketch only three inches long, that might not translate very well. So they measured it and then I did a scale drawing. Those of you that have had me for about fifth and sixth grade and we've done architecture, you guys know that we take the numbers of the big thing and we make them smaller by a certain amount. So I took the 21 feet wide by 10 feet tall wall and I translated that to about five and a half inches tall and what's half of 21, uh -huh, math. And then I made a piece of paper that was that size. So if you look at the back, that is a scale piece of paper that's going to match the size. So if I made this bigger and bigger and bigger, it would eventually fit onto the mural wall. And I have on here something that's important at my school, the scholar leader friend. I had to measure that too. And then over here with the circles, the students are going to put their handprints on it and trace it. Now this wasn't just my idea. I had, was part of a group that sort of voted on some ideas. I had to take their idea. I did several sketches, but this is the one that they picked and liked the best. And then I had a bunch of volunteers come and help me out. So what I did was the sketch. I also made stencils, which you'll see in some pictures, for us to trace on the wall. And then my volunteers, they helped me do the rest. Um, other things you might need when you do a mural. For my at-home mural, I needed um, just a short ladder, because I am a shorty pants, and my wall is about eight or nine feet tall, I think. This wall is outside, so I needed to make sure that I had a ladder that could work on the grass. I had to make sure that I had brushes or rollers, things to put the paint on the wall. I needed to make sure that we had things to clean up with. So if you were using something that was a little bit messier, you might need more than just a bucket or two of water. You might need a hose to clean things up. Um, so it was a big, long process. You'll see some pictures where we break it down. You'll see um, the stencils getting tape on it so we could tape it on the wall in order to trace it. You'll see some beginning shots and then through the end. It's still not finished. We're still waiting on our scholars to come and put their handprints on it, but it's almost done. So you, if you live in my town and you go by the school I work at, you'll, you'll see the really amazing work that they've done. So the reason I thought it was important to talk about the mural, um, first of all, it's a really great project and it's going to look really awesome and add a lot of color to the neighborhood. Um, I think right now in the world, wow, there's a lot going on, right? A lot of things that you might be confused about or you might be passionate about, certain um, injustices that you might see or certain situations that you're trying to make better and you can't fix everything, right? But you could put a tiny little drop in the bucket. The bucket of kindness, the bucket of creativity, the bucket of doing your best. Each little drop that you put in there, each little drop that I put in there, that someone else puts in there, it's going to fill that bucket up. And soon when that bucket is overfilled with kindness and creativity, our world is going to be a much better place. So your challenge is to design a mural. It could be just a colorful mural you might want to put on the side of your house. You might have a building where you live that when you drive by you think, oh man, it's kind of an old looking building. It could really use some help. You could design a mural to put on the side of that building, right? Think about um, what you want to say with your mural. Ours was celebrating our scholars. Mine at home was kind of working with color and with shiny and not shiny parts. Those are things that I wanted to work with. You might want to talk to your parents and see what they're passionate about, or maybe your brother loves Legos and you want to do a mural for him, okay? Think about the supplies you'll need. Think about measuring it. Now, this is just a challenge. You're not actually going to go out to a building and measure it and start painting on it. But if you're really passionate and you want to do a mural, check out in your community. Talk to your community arts people. Um, you might have downtown developments like we do. Reach out. There might be organizations later in the summer that open up that are going to want to do those things. Think about the supplies you need, the sort of message that you want, and I want to see what you guys come up with, okay? Make sure that you're being safe, that you're being kind, and you're definitely being creative. And I'll see you next time.